Why am I so unhappy? Um, why, why do I feel like, um, like that, that, that old cliche, is this all there is? Um, mm. Why do I feel listless? And, you know, it had been a recurring pattern for me. Now, that was a good, strong 20 year run. And right. it was high pressure. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It, um, it gave me a spiritual life. It opened up the world and changed my life forever, for sure. Dr. Mindy here. Your body is in a, in a war zone. This is different yes. parts of the brain get activated depending upon how stressed you are. When you look at it from that inflammatory. That's interesting. I mean, that has some merit to it for sure. And you can't control everything. Yeah, I'd say. And what about the uh, a woman who is not pregnant, but she's aiming? Here's what I want to do is I want to start where you know, your life dramatically shifted. So in your book, I love how you explain what your ahas were when you all shut down the Oprah Winfrey show and said goodbye to that. And then what I read in your book, the, the, the boundary the of no. The beautiful no. The beautiful no. no. <laughs> the beautiful yeah. no. I'm like, was it, all I saw was it was boundaries. You said yes. some boundaries. Right. And what, what my takeaway from it was that you really stood up for yourself and said, not, you know, in, in that there's going to be a new chapter of my life yeah. and it's going to be one that I am the producer of my own life, not the producer of, of somebody else's. That's the way I read it. So can you talk a little bit about that transformation? For sure. Well, the, what's happened since is and and the journey that i went on was the answer to the question why am i so unhappy mm. why am i so unhappy i'm at i'm at the freaking top of the heap why am i so unhappy um why why do i feel like um like that 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 old cliche is this all there is um, mm. why do I feel listless? And, you know, it had been a recurring pattern for me. Now that was a good, strong 20 year run and right. it was high pressure. I wouldn't trade it for anything. It, um, it gave me a spiritual life. It opened up the world and changed my life forever for sure. Um, but prior to that, I had had this pattern of, um, always not being able to make a change in my life until I was miserable. Until yeah. like I couldn't get out of bed. Then it's time to end the relationship, mm. end the friendship, leave the job. And and that continued to be a thing. It's like, gosh darn it, I, I just want to make everything work. Even when it's mm. like, but you don't even like it. What are you doing? Why are you trying to make these so ill-fitting true. clothes fit you? What are you doing? And but it, it's something maybe uh, um, some some childhood stuff about achievement and worthiness and certainly some Midwestern plucky off to the, my job with my lunch pail. And gosh, darn it, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to let blood from my veins if you write a paycheck with my name on it and I will be loyal and win the gold watch at the end. So so I've got all that. It's it's, it's a powerful brew that I've had to shake free of. You know, I that love that analogy. <laughs> I mean, that that actually a lot of us feel that, you know, in our own lives, like you do all the things that you society says do. And then you get to the top of the mountain and you're like, wait a second, I don't I'm not happy. This this wasn't the path for me. Well, and that's why we get so annoyed with the younger generations who are like, I'm not doing that anymore. And we're like, what? What? <laughs> what do you mean you're not doing that anymore? You're not going to suffer yes. and struggle and be miserable? <laughs> yes. Get in line. Oh get, get back. So, so we're, we're, we're a little jelly. We're a little jelly. And, you know, I know that's true of me. So I always have to say, listen, you. You're of a certain age. You were trained a certain way. You're trying to set yourself free. Don't trap anybody else in those chains. So, oh, yeah. So that. it was basically the answer to the question of why am I so unhappy? And um, the, the show had been over for five years. Um, I had been, I think, very generously um, devoted myself for five more years to help with the own turnaround. And mm -hmm. it, it was time for that all to be done. And there I sat there going, well, jeepers, Owen's in a good shape. The show ended with a bang. Why am I so unhappy? And why is my life ah. not, not what I want it to be? So that began really what ultimately was 
this, it was almost like a five part journey. Like, mm-hmm. like I took all my little skills, my producerly skills, and and also the knowledge I had. I had a front row seat to every thought leader that had ever yeah. been. And it was like, oh my gosh, okay, let's just start applying some things and really looking mm-hmm. and seeing what have I created and do I have the courage to look at it truthfully? What have I created? Where have I stumbled? Where have I fallen short? What are the unlived corners of my life? And then, mm. then what do you really want? I mean, I mm. hadn't taken two seconds to think about that. What do you really want, Sherry Salata? And, um, you know, I, I pulled out my someday list and it was as dusty as the Magna Carta. You know, I hadn't thought about it. Like, I got no time for activities and expansion and things like that. And I just decided that I was going to learn how to dream again. Mm. I was going to practice what I believed, which is that we are constantly magnetizing the next version of our lives to us, the next version of ourselves by our choices, by our thoughts, by our stories about ourselves. And I was going to stop being a leaf on the wind and I was going to start really authoring my own narrative and my own story and, and play the game, play the fun game. Mm of Mm. what's working what do i want and thank you thank you thank you so much because so much Mm. is working and um slowly but surely i i you know i just i i I felt like my feet i got my feet on the path of transformation and once i got Mm. a taste of that once i had the feeling for that i'm like i'm never getting off Ooh, so i i feel like i'm at the beginning of that what you just said. And I feel like for the first time I'm doing what you, you just explained where I'm asking myself at 53 years old, like, what do I want? And I think this is sort of a, it's a human condition, but I think it's very much a woman condition where we're constantly giving, giving, giving to those around us. And, and we, it feels good to give. I don't, don't get me wrong. It feels good to give. It yeah. feels good to have people reflect back to you how meaningful and useful you are. But in that, we truly lose what w- our heart desires is, what our soul desires. Right. And I'm just learning how to ask that question through. I know you and I are going to talk about some of our psychedelic experiences, yes. but it's it's giving me new perspective on what I really want. So sh- share with us, because I think a lot of our listeners are in that same place. We, we come, we get done with parenting, we get done with a career, and then we sit there and go, holy shit, my life was about everybody else. Now yeah. what am I going to do? Well, and again, we're all of a certain age. There's this generational area that, that, that we share. And the truth is we were not trained to receive we were not trained to uh, shake things loose. We weren't trained to upset the apple cart. Um, we were trained to people, please. We were trained not to bother anybody. We were trained not to draw attention to ourselves. We were trained yes. we, we were trained to give and give and give and give and just stuff that resentment down with Chardonnay and chips. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's yeah. true. So even when you start to feel that rage and the rage is really rage at yourself that you've just let yourself be in mm. many ways, kind of a mm, kind of a doormat in a way. Um, and that w- once we start to feel that we were never taught those feelings were appropriate. So it's a it's it's mm. very, very mm, it's it, it takes a lot of courage to open up that Pandora's box and feel your grief. Mm for the life that you thought you might live that you didn't, for the choices that you didn't make, you got to grieve that, that life that you thought was going to happen that didn't happen. You've got to rage at yourself and, 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 and get that anger out of like, oh my God, everybody came before me. Everybody came before me. And we have to learn to understand that in changing those patterns, that it's going to bring up that crazy guilt thing. Like, who do you yeah. think you are? You're not the center of the world, blah, blah, blah. You know, yes. all of that, 
all of that. So it's tricky. Yeah. Okay. So I want to take those two concepts because I have experienced exactly that. Last year was grief. And it was like every morning I would get up and cry. And, uh, and everybody around me is like, what's wrong with you? Everything in your life is great. And it, it was like, I couldn't explain it. You know, my kids had left the home. I was leaving my clinic. I closed my clinic last year. And it was like, I think what I was grieving was my identity. My identity was falling apart and I didn't have a new identity that was my own showing up. And then the guilt part that you just explained, that also is really huge because the guilt I believe is the programming from, from society. And I'll even, you know, put in there the patriarchal world um, of just, hey, in order to perform in this world, you need to show up a certain way. And I wasn't willing to show up that way right. anymore. Right, right, for sure. So everything's shifting, everything's changing now. So in, in your first experience of that, it feels like the world is crumbling around you. It feels like you don't know who you are or how to be. It feels like you've made such terrible mistakes and all, and, and, and it'll be too late to change it. And on the other hand, when you walk, get on that path and you start doing the work and you start, um, um, really looking at the shame and seeing where it comes mm -hmm. from and understanding that, um, Almost every, this is going to be a bold thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to preface it by saying, uh, obviously, it's, it can't be true for every single person, but this is a real generalization that when you first come get real about this, how you formed relationships, if you are of a certain age and you're a woman, almost every relationship you ever formed is tinged with the, the taint of codependency. Ooh, I, yeah, because that's what society's taught us to do in relationships. Yes, yes. Don't be a bother. Don't be a bother. Don't put yourself first. Don't say what you want. You know, I don't care. Where do you want to go? I don't care. Da, da, da. And, yes. al and also, even in friendships, it's like, um, I'll put up with you and you put up with me and let's not bother each other instead of let's support each other in real growth and not mm. need each other. Like, I, I, I just want to cling to you so I'm not alone. So, you yeah. know, when I walk into the party, I know some people. It's that almost every relationship is, is tainted until you sit back and say, okay, I'm going to heal this stuff and then I'm going to come to my life with a new sense of integrity of I am mm. authentic and I'm going to authentically interact with others. And what do you do when you make that bold decision in your relationships that you're not going to operate in a certain way? Yeah. Let's say you're, you're in a marriage. Let's say you're now a friendship. I can see where friendships could fall apart. And, and, and it's, I've, I've gotten to this point where I'm okay if friendships fall away that are not in my highest good. But what about like rela really intimate relationships or family members? How are you able, is there a way to express like, Hey guys, I'm no longer putting up with this anymore. I'm actually going to stand up for what I feel is best for me. Is there yeah. a way to eloquently do that? Yes, you can be eloquent, but you have no, no control over other people's responses. And here's what I'm going to say. As somebody who I would lug around relationships for 30 years, it's like right to my, right to my, right to the day I take my last breath, I would have been, been lugging everything along. But you start to do this work, you start to transform your life. Endings happen naturally. And I'm like, gosh, what is this? What is it that I'm learning now? Oh, it's okay to have conclusions. It's mm. okay for things to run their course. I don't mm. have to keep blowing my, my breath on and stoking the fire of something that is, you know, is, is barely there anymore. So, yeah. um, I, I don't have to keep twisting myself in a pretzel or dimming my light or pretending like I haven't grown in order to keep this going. Now yeah. I am not married. So this, so this is again, another bold statement. I am not married, but I work with tons of women who've been married for decades and maybe I'm not married because it gives me a crisp little observational point that one might not have if you were involved in your own in your own yeah. long-term marriage or entanglement. But listen, same with that. 
I see women all the time who start to start to put themselves first, start to begin to think about their dreams and, and what they really want for their lives. And they say, listen, it's okay if my marriage is over. It's, mm -hmm. it's just the thing that neither one of us has said to each other, but let's have that conversation. And we can mm -hmm. either decide together that we're going to reinvent this marriage and this relationship so it suits us both who we are today, or let's part as friends mm -hmm. and go find new love. Mm -hmm. And for those of us who loyalty and devotion, and, and, and we take that very seriously, that, that can be really challenging. Um, mm. and yet often it's the next right thing. Yeah. I think, you know, I can tell you giving the perspective of a woman who's been married for a while, that one of the things I did last year was really go to my husband and be like, Hey, I'm showing up different. Our life is different. I don't, we don't, the kids aren't around and here's what I need from this relationship. And I'm really blessed to be married to a man that heard me and has expanded with me. And I think there's a way that you can take a step into yes. something that feels old and stagnant and you can be very true with your words and then watch together if you can expand. And I will tell you, my parents have been married 60 years. They're in their eighties. And when they had their 50th wedding anniversary, I asked both of them, what's the secret to a long-term marriage? And they both said, when the other person wants to grow, let them. You have to let them grow. And sometimes you're gonna wanna join them in that growth and sometimes you're gonna be fine just sitting back, but there has to be room within that relationship for growth. Genius. And I think, super genius, right? So I do believe that there's a lot of ways we can skin that discussion that yeah. we're having around containers. I call them containers now. Like I, I really am looking at the containers of my life and some of them are friendships and some of, and my work was a container that just needed to be blown apart and yeah. redefined. Yeah. So there is a, there's an elevation, I believe into that conversation. The, the, the one thing you said though, I really, this is like my deep in my heart and what I learned from my last psychedelic journey is the power of women nurturing women. Yeah. So talk a little bit about that when we look at friendships, because friendships also can be something that holds us back. Sometimes friendships, they don't, your women friends don't want to see you grow. I, I, we've, I've seen situations like that. Of course. But where, where in your life have you used the power of friendships and, and meaningful connections with other humans to accelerate your growth? Well, so about uh, maybe 14 months ago, I, I started therapy for the first time. And the first thing that came up were this, the, a whole litany of how I would form friendships and relationships. Um, and it, it wasn't necessarily reciprocal and it wasn't necessarily um, uh, mutually supportive and probably fraught with a lot, a lot of things. So then all, all of a sudden I'm on a rocket ride of this expansion and spiritual growth and you're just no longer a match. So in, in thinking about that, as I could start to see that and feel that and have to deal with my anxiety about like, oh my gosh, you know, this is the, 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 what my, the picture of my life is changing so dramatically and my cast of characters in my story, whoop, whoop, mm. whoop, gone, 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 mm. gone, gone, gone. And I was like, you know, here is, here is the, the simple truth is that finally I love my own company. I'm not mm. trying to like have a, buddy all the time. I love my own mm. company. So in loving my own company, I'm okay to be more discerning. And to give mm. you an example, one of my, like maybe the last eight years, um, a, a friendship with somebody who's much younger than me, like it wasn't like a, oh, you're the greatest, you're the greatest. Like it, it, it happened over time. And um, as she has grown, I mean, I, I, I learned so much from her. Yeah. I mean, she, she's such a pip. I just, I'm like, tell me else how you're doing that. Tell me, you know, yes. like, what do you think? Like, tell me, like, she's really, I learned so much for her. I'm just not the big wise elder. 
And we decided, um, gosh, maybe uh, a year ago that what we would do is every month we would do uh, like a, a soul council. So we mm. would we would make sure we live in different cities that we would have a Zoom like on a Sunday, you know, with our coffee or green tea if we're fasting. And Excellent. we would we would we would really talk about the soul issues mm. and, and just leave e both of us would have the opportunity to say, here's what I'm going through. Here's where I'm expanding. Here's what I'm thinking. And I'm telling you what a change. Wow. From what a change from the I feel so bad, da da da. Whose yes. life is worse? Yes, yes. <laughs> you well, know? That's what we do. That's what we do as women. We oh, bitch with think, each other. Yeah, that's right. Why that's do we right. do that? We we could do exactly what you're saying, where we could elevate and lift each other up. The the yeah. friendships in my life are very much like that. Yeah, it's very much like here's a pattern of thought that's not working for me. And I like, help me. I want to hear what, how you're thinking because yes. you're thinking maybe add to the way that I'm thinking and it might elevate where I'm at, at right now. And I think that's the power of women that we can, sure. we can come together and, and expand our beautiful hearts. Yes. And, and, and it begins with you making the commitment to wanting to be expanded and elevated. Mm, yeah. um, what, it gets tricky when you don't want to change. And you don't yeah. want to hear that stuff, that woo, yeah. woo, 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 woo. You don't want to hear that. And, you know, I just would rather tell you everybody I'm mad at and what those stories are. So that doesn't work anymore. Not going to yeah. do it. Not good for me. Yeah. Not good for, I, I don't want, I don't, I don't want to spend my time doing that. And so now I'm not a match for, for what you want, but I yeah. am literally, that is not a standard I'm going to ever lower again because I don't want to talk about yeah. anything else. Uh, uh, amen. I am amen. So, and okay. And then the other thing I want to say on this is that what's the difference? This is something that showed up in my writing the next book. What's the difference between your heart and your soul? Mm. You know, we say I, I'm giving everything my heart and soul. Yeah. But yet when when we go into the self-discovery place, we're trying to get to know our heart and soul. And yeah. so are they the same thing? And that's a question I've been asking myself. That's that's interesting. Well, off the top of my head. So here's the download that comes to me that the heart is, is what's here with me in my 3D experience yes. that is giving me emotional feedback that if I would only pay attention would, would show me a lot of things. And the yes. heart through my heart is how my soul, my inner being, my, um, the, the part of me that is not in 3d, that's kind of running the show uses, speaks to me through my heart. That's yes. what I think. Agreed. I think they work in tandem. So I, I would agree. I think that the brain has been so conditioned by our external world that when we actually come to this place where we want to get to know ourselves, our true selves, it's actually behooves us to not use the brain. It behooves us to really tap into the heart and the soul doesn't speak to us through the brain because I feel like the soul knows that there's too much noise up there, but the heart doesn't. Right. And if you could turn within and like literally like when you think of situations that just feel so right to you for me it literally feels like a warm glow in my heart right absolutely and here's what i'll also say about our, our little minds that we're clever little tricksters yes you we know are. we're clever little like it's, it's just like when i think about i was just doing this the other day and i was like there you are you're doing it again how i love mm -hmm. to talk about meditation you know what I mean? Mm. I like to talk about it. I can talk yeah. about it forever. <laughs> let's, let's do some more talking about meditation. Let's talk, 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 and then some more talk. Then we'll talk about what I think about what I just said about meditation. So and, good. So you good. know, and it's just like, Sherry, it's a practice. It isn't a conversation. It isn't like a thought spiral in your head. It is sitting down and it really is. So, so I just... I'm, I, I've got a slippery character that I got to keep my eye on mm. because I'm smart. 
I'm yes. I, I've got it. Yes. I've got a really snappy brain. I'm yes. smart and I can. Oh, I can just tie everything up with a big bow and it sounds so great. And I have so much understanding. And so but and and, and be completely out of my heart. Yes. And be completely disconnected from my feelings and my heart. So I got to watch that. It's such a perfect example. I'm the same way. I can talk about meditation all the day, all day long, but you want to sit me down and make me do it. That's a whole nother thing. That was, right. that was, that was a brilliant example of your crafty mind. <laughs> yes. so it's really good. And it's like, and I literally somehow convinced myself that I've meditated. No. You haven't meditated. You've been talking about it. I do the same thing with yoga. Listen, I should be a yogi teaching at the Ganges for as much as I talk about yoga. And it's like, where's my dusty mat rolled up? You know, I just, that's so funny. I do love, I do love words and I love yes. spitting a yarn. And really what, what, when I really get on point, it's when I realize the words are the creative building blocks that I need to use to ignite my heart mm. to magnetize what I want to me. Not a bunch mm. of fluffery that sounds good. Fluffery. I, I love words as well. And I will take a word. I actually have a whiteboard in my office here. And I will take a word and just write it up there. Like one of my new words that I'm fascinated by is the word curiosity. Yeah. I want to take that word and magnify it and bleed it into every aspect of my life yeah. and be curious because when my brain is curious, it's not in judgment. Yes, exactly. What a tool. Yes. What a tool that word is. And like, and then the, in the right? It's yeah. such a tool. So I oh, just, right. I've been sitting with that word curious and I'm like, could you be curious, Mindy, about that? Be curious. And it just changes the whole agenda that the brain has for yeah. myself, yeah. which is phenomenal. So that actually leads me to the, the big thing I want to talk to you about, which is your psychedelic journeys, because um, I think we're at a, a, seeing a renaissance of the psychedelic movement. People are revisiting this. Um, they're looking at it. I love this concept of it being the third wave of psychedelics where the first wave we thought everybody would do psychedelics and drop out of society. The second wave was, you know, Nancy Reagan telling us this is our brain on drugs. And I feel like actually psychedelics is a form of medicine and the way it's being used right now is actually a mixture of those first two waves. So, so talk a little bit about how you even, cause your story about how you were even open to psychedelics yeah. in this yes. new version of you emerging. What, how did you, what did you think of it? Where, how did you be, what changed your mind and what was the door in? I was not a drug person at all. I mean, I, I was like, eh, you know, pot, pot was never my drug of choice. It just made me want to eat. And, and it made me like, I'm like, yes, I know I'm laughing, but I feel sad. I don't like this feeling. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wasn't a, a drug person. So as I started to learn about ayahuasca, plant medicine, and other uh, psychedelics and mushrooms and things like that, I was like, yeah, I don't think that's for me. And I was just like, no judgment. I just don't think it's for me. I don't think it's for me. I don't think it's for me. Until one day, someone said, oh, we're going to get this shot. We're going to see the shaman and do an uh, uh, ayahuasca weekend. And would you like to come? And I was like, oh, my gosh. I, I'm not saying no, it's not for me. What's going on? Right. And so I was just open for open to it. And I went wouldn't even say that was a fantastic experience, but let let me tell you what what is my repertoire and then and then we can go back. Please. I probably have now done three, four, five, maybe six journeys of various different kinds of of medicines. And um at the beginning, um, I was curious and I was yes. open. I was like, hmm, I could see some pos Now, that wasn't a particularly transformative experience, but I could see the possibilities. And so then I try something else. Um, I think I did um, uh, my second my second experience was guided um, uh, mushrooms. And that mm -hmm. was a, a big hero's dose. Yeah. How much did journey. you do? Five, five grams. Yeah. Oh yeah. You yeah. went, you went, yeah. you went to a whole new realm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I just had, 
I had a couple mystical experiences during that day. And I always do it guided with intention. Like I'm not just flying yes, around the campfire agree. like, Woo, give me ketamine. Yeah. You know, I'm a little afraid of that. And I'm not sure. I, I do have a bit of an addictive nature. So I, I really watch that. But yeah. very guided, very intentional. There's a start. There's a finish. There's integration. It's you yes, know, agreed. It's, it's a plan. It isn't yes, just a, agreed. a frivolous thing. So um, I in, 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 the, in that big mushroom journey, there was a couple of mystical experiences um, that were cleaned up for me, like a, a, a relationship that I'd had in high school that was um, w with a guy that was that was difficult and complicated and like kind of love, kind of what um, and um, was never resolved. And he literally came to me as a 60 year old man in this journey mm. and told me his side of the story. And I was mm. like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Here I was thinking this, this and this. And it would just it just gave me such insight into mm. how my own sense of unworthiness and my own fears created these big narratives that weren't even true. Like yep. you, you were, you were just so, you just felt so unworthy and you were trying to act like you weren't mm -hmm. feeling unworthy that you, you just crafted these stories that had nothing to do with reality. So you, when you're so busy worrying what other people think about you, you're not a very good lover. Mm -hmm. You can't offer love. Yeah. When you're when when you're always self conscious and worrying about what other people are thinking of you, so it was super. I came out of that. I was like, "Holy majoli! I cannot believe he came. He came to me in my mushroom journey." Yeah. Okay. So I want to I want to pause for a moment because I truly believe this is the benefit of a guided journey like the one that you did. I also had a hero's journey that that I'll share here in a moment. But when you're with a guide, when you have that aha in that moment. What's interesting and different than like marijuana or or alcohol, those two tend to be you check out and then you wake up the next morning and you don't remember every, anything. What I think in it, it, what I just heard in you is you checked in oh, yeah. and you went in and you saw a part of you, a, a pattern of yours yeah. that was no longer serving you and you remembered it when you came out, which yes. is why the integration is so important. So how did that change you how did that well, as far as how you you handled relationships after well that, that was just a, that was such a shock and it's all it's 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 another piece the integration piece is a big deal and that's when yeah. you <clears throat> sit and really say how many ways have i done that have i been yeah. so self-focused in my unworthiness that i i was really not seeing the love that was being offered not able to receive it not even to be able to re you know, reciprocate it. And so it begins as a big thought starter. Now it isn't like everything was wrapped up with a bow, but it set me off on this course where I'm like, mm -hmm. I'm going to get really curious. And, 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 and this big thing that I, I'm going to intimately know myself and I will use yes. whatever modalities yes. are available to me to do it. I want to intimately know myself. Mm -hmm. And so I love that. Then it was the next yeah. journey and the next. And so the next ones were um, guided. Um, I don't even know. Is it MDMA? Is that is that? MDMA? Uh, yeah. So there's MD, MDMA is one of yeah. one of MDMA, things ketamine and LSD as a trio, which Ooh. is a, a day long experience that, um, yeah. I, you know, I, I, I did sessions beforehand. I intended yeah. what I wanted to do. And so this is another big mystical one was my first session with um, LSD ketamine and MMDA. And I always screw that up. See, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not very proficient in the drug world. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's all good. You're doing a great job. It's all good. And, and I was going. Um, I was going in to really explore my mother wound. My, my mom mm. didn't have the tools and. Um, had really struggled with self-love and worthiness herself. So um, it, it, it was it was very trying for me as a kid. And so I was going in to really explore the mother wound. And at about 30 minutes in, I'm telling you, this, this thing happened. 
my guide counselor starts to talk about something and I'm like, whoa, whoa, wait, 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 wait. And I can hear myself start to chant, all the mamas bring the love, all the mamas bring the love, all the mamas bring the love. And I'm like, and even in, in, in that state, altered state, I'm like, what does that mean? And I'm like, oh, my matriarchal line, my patriarchal line, all the women going back to the beginning of those lines were bringing Ooh. in the love. We're just bringing in the love. And I was just weeping and chanting and weeping and chanting. That went on for about 45 minutes, according wow. to my guide. She's never seen anything like it. And all of a sudden, I was like, okay, now we can begin. Like, they, <laughs> they began the session. These women, these spirit women from the beginning of time, mm. you know, came and brought in the love. So, so what happens after that? So then I think about that. And I think about that that sense that oh when i heal my mom heals ah oh, yes and, ah and, and yes up and down the lines the healing happens yes. or i can still be sitting around in a corner being i don't think my mom loved me and i wish i would have had a mom that yeah. or i can do the healing work set her free set myself free and then uncover the next thing dr mindy yeah. because then there's the next thing to yes. intimately know and explore and intimately know and explore. And at the end of the day, and I'm curious what your experience has been, when I'm really jazzed by the psychedelic experiences, when I know I've slipped my 3D dimensional perspective and I'm dancing with my soul. Yes, yes. Um, uh, so and, well said. So oh, and well when said. that happens, I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah. oh, oh, I'm so powerful. I'm so yep. powerful. Yeah, so powerful. And, and and so, you know, when you look at, they've been saying for many years that we, uh, like right now, we're only using about 10% of our brain. Like we're, we're, we're not accessing our full brain power. Right. And I think one of the things that happens to us on our, in our 3D human life is that we don't have a full perspective. Like you've used the word perspective several times. And, and I think that hurts us because we're not, it's like we need that 30,000 foot view of our life to have a better understanding of what that day-to-day -day is going through. And the, the, the biggest thing I can, I, I can relate to that was, I, I think I told you this when we met, that I actually had a near-death experience in my mid-30s. And um, one of the things that I came out of that with was I had the life review, I went down the tunnel and every thought, every person I ever met, every thought I ever thought, every event I ever had in my life was played back to me. And when you stop and you think about how that could happen, it's illogical. But when I decided to come back, what I learned from that experience was that there's a whole lot more to life than we are seeing. Right. And we are only living a small, in, we are whole, all of our troubles, all of our happiness, all of our self-worth is built around this small little fragment right. of what we know. So when I go into a psychedelic journey, I go in with that intention. I go in with a question. I go within, I need, a, I need to come back into a bigger perspective, which is what I just heard you say. Yeah. And I think when we do it from that lens, it's like we can all have these near death experiences in a very safe and and system somewhat of a systematic way for our own emotional well being. Is that what? And I'll tell you my yeah. journey here in a moment. But is that how you feel? Like you come out with this expanded perspective of yourself that you now can operate from? Yes. And if 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 that you decide to do the integrative work, which is yes. here, here are the four gems that got dropped on me. How am I going to incorporate that into my daily life and, and give, it. give myself those touchstones. So, um, I mean, literally one of the gems on one of the journeys was get in the water, get in the water, get in the water. I'm like, so I come out and I'm talking to my guide and my, one of my sessions afterwards, I go, get in the water, get in the water. And she's like, do you have a lap pool by you? And I go, oh, I do. I just saw an advertisement for it. Next thing you know, I got my swim cap, you know, and I got in the water. 
and I got in the Amazing. water three three days a week, and I'm like, this is really good. This feels very spiritual. It feels like I'm more connected. So sometimes it's little specific things like that, yeah. and sometimes it's like, oh my god, there's so much more, right? Oh, oh there's so much. God, more. there's so much yes. more. So tell me, let's talk about yours and then we'll talk about the one medicine that we both did that. Yeah. So, I, so I, last, last year in my grieving year, I did uh, three major journeys and then I just did one six weeks ago. The, the um, three major ones I did last year, two, uh, two of them were psilocybin and one of them was ketamine. Um, I feel like ketamine in, in, and they were all done in a therapeutic setting yeah. with intention and integration. Ketamine w was really beautiful in the sense that it, I felt so calm and peaceful afterwards. I felt connected. It is definitely the one that makes you feel connected to so many things. Um, I felt a deep connection to women. It, it showed up in a visual for me, which was really beautiful. Um, the psilocybin really um, helped me help understand like why was I left? That has been a, a question I've had from my near death experience is like, what is my soul's purpose? And I, I, I definitely, the psilocybin helped me with that. But this most recent one is the one we should talk about. Okay. So I, I did it with two women. Uh, one was a therapist and one I'll call her a psychedelic expert. And I did MDMA, I did uh, psilocybin, four, four and a half grams, and I did uh, five MEO DMT, which is uh, Bufo, the, the, the toad, and it was a synthetic version. Same. Um, and so there were a couple of highlights. There's a lot of highlights and, and what, and for people listening, I think one of the things that happens to me in these journeys is it's like a truth serum. It's like the cells start talking and they're like, Hey, we need to process this. Hey, we need to process this. And so I would tell them like, I've sat at the, at the bedside of four patients dying. And I'm like, I got to tell you what, how, what happened to me in that. And I, and they would just write it down and we would keep talking about things. But the two, two of the biggest things, one is, um, you know, as my daughter and I have had some bumpy road in the last several years and uh, really committed to working our relationship out. And what I discovered is that I energetically had some, some things that were holding me back from that relation because of her birth. It wasn't the way I wanted it to go. So these two beautiful women actually sat and held me as I rebirthed her. And I went through that experience and I talked about how I energetically wanted that to be. And I got to tell you, our relationship is changed now. And she even said to me two days after the journey, she said, you're, you're a new version, you're softer. And it was like, energetically, I could put down something that I perhaps had been holding right. against her and I didn't even realize it, right? It was like, I didn't even realize that. So that was one thing. But then the 5-MeO um, DMT, the, the Bufo, you know, it's a, it's a short journey. It's like 15 minutes and you go somewhere else. And you know what I did, Sherry? For the I did it twice in that, in, the whole thing was about an eight to 10 hour journey. But the Bufo part of it, um, I screamed my head off for 15 minutes. And it was like the greatest scream I had ever had. And these two beautiful women screamed with me. I was like, at one point I was like, oh my God, the, their neighbors are gonna come or something is gonna happen. But I, you know what it felt like? It felt like every single time, I could cry right now, every time I didn't use my voice, yeah. every time I pushed down what I wanted to say, I was able to set free in that experience. And I feel like a new person because of that. Oh my God, that's amazing. That's amazing. My, um, my synthetic Bufo experience was, um, it wasn't 15 minutes. It was 45 because Ooh. it was, it was taken differently. It was taken through the nose rather than, um, Oh yeah. And, um, it was, it literally was a dance with my soul. I just, mm. it was just a dance. And like, I remember downloading all this information, like, all yes. the, like give me all the information give me all the don't leave anything out give me all the information and then the trust comes with I will continue to be led as long as I do my practices and I keep my heart open I will continue to be led 
to exactly, yep. you know, exactly what's right for me, exactly what's expansive for me to the life I say I want. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know, I, I, I think if what I'd love for people to understand is that I can tell you in the near death experience that there is so much more than what we're seeing. And when I hear you say, give me the downloads, that's what I feel like Bufo is, does, is it gives you the downloads. Right. And one of the downloads I got in that experience was how much I have pushed down my own desires and I'm not gonna do it anymore. It's like once I, I let that free, I have been standing up for myself so much more and, and saying what I want so much without guilt, without worry of disappointment. And I saw that in that 15 minute experience. Right. It was really interesting. So interesting. And again, you know yourself intimately, you learn something about yourself. You were able to really, I feel the same way, like something happens. There's a release of something. It isn't just like, oh, more things to work on. It's like yeah. something is healed. Something is yes. healed. Something's revealed. And, you know, here, here, and here's what I found because obviously I get asked a lot of time about where, who, what. And I say yeah. this respect the magic and just do some little inquiries in, with people that you think um, are open to it. And that's how you find your guides. They're not yes. ever, they're not advertising, you know, like here, come to me for that. No, they it, can't. They can't. So, so do let the magic work, the magic, you know, just, yeah. just start keeping your ears open, start listening and, and find, find the guide and the medicine that's right for you. If you, if you listen to us having this conversation and you're like, oh my gosh, I think that's next for me. It certainly feels like a, a momentum changer, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Do you feel like the medicine called you? Because that's how, that's how I feel every single time. It was like this internal, yes, yes, yeah. I want to go do that. And I was like you, I was, you know, as a health professional, I'm like, no way are we going to do this stuff? Like, this is right. crazy. But it, there was something in my, inside me that said, oh, but there's more. There's more. And, and you, if you're willing to, to take this out of the container of bad and harmful and put it into the container of possibility and open that up, maybe there's more to your life than you're really seeing. And there's more to understanding your soul than you really right. know. Right. And there's more assistance. There's more yes. assistance. Like, can we allow ourselves some support? some support in this expansion and and what ends up it ends up feeling to me somebody asked me once like what do you feel like i go i feel like a spiritual pioneer yeah i feel like i feel like we're living in this time the patriarchal is crumbling the patriarch yes. is crumbling it is it's, it's, it's no longer a match or a fit so it's just crumbling before our eyes the divine feminine is rising there's there's never been a better time to be alive what you have access to if if you'll be a good steward for yourself what the yep. information you have access to the possibilities you have access to and this just feels like the the leading edge of pioneering that level of expansion and i don't i don't push it on anybody because you got to be called no you no gotta be it's, called. yeah you have like you know what I'm not called to is ayahuasca. Yeah. I don't know why. I don't know why. I, I mean, maybe at some point I need to know more about it, but it's just not calling me. Yeah. And e each journey has been very isolated. It's not like you come out of that and go, "Oh, I want to go do that again." I come out of it and go, "Wow, there's a lot to process here." Yeah. Let me Same. sit with that. Yeah. And then I process it. And then when the processing feels like it's normalized, then there's like, okay, do I, I, I ask myself every three to four months, like, do I, do I want to go in again? Because it is a version of tapping into another dimension of healing. And I, I think that, what would you say to the people who are like, that sounds really scary, which I have heard people say. I think there've been a couple times where beforehand I'm a little like, whew, you know, whew. You know, just a little trepidatious, maybe a little nervous. But what what overcomes that for me is understanding that it's okay to be trepidatious. It's okay to be nervous. But I am a I want to live my life where I'm on the leading edge of consciousness. 
Mm, that's wh- that's agreed. where I want to live. And that's yep. where I want to relate. And that's where I want my, my companions to be. And that's, yep. those are the experiences. That's where I want my work to be. Those are the experiences I want to have. So if I'm going to follow those expanded consciousness breadcrumbs and I'm going to tune myself so I can hear the downloads and I, I can get those big, big yeses, those heartful yeses, and I can continue to heal and elevate and transcend, then I want to be on the leading edge. And I don't want to yeah. leave any stone unturned. And yeah. I don't want to not know myself. Yeah. And what do you say to the people who say, oh, isn't this dangerous to your brain or your body? Well, I don't know that I'm qualified to answer that, Dr. Mindy. You're more (laughs) qualified than me. You're qualified. Listen, I I don't know. You've read the studies. Mm -hmm. It sounds like people's neuroplasticity increases and there's less depression. And like, are are we just beginning? I mean, these, these are, this is these are ancient techniques. Yes, they are. Yes. Ancient we're, techniques. Yes. And we're just beginning to understand them. I mean, yeah. Huberman just did Huberman just did three back-to-back episodes on psilocybin, psychedelics, and MDMA. Really? And he is the number one podcast in America right now. That tells you. And he did it what's going on which is why I'm feeling like we need to open up this conversation so that if people are called to it, that they would, that they, they can, like you said, I love your, I mean, we can't tell you who to go to or what to do. It's definitely an underground thing at this moment. But my next question actually to you is, uh, do you think, I mean, I know that our federal government here in America has the intention to legalize it within a year. Do you think that's actually going to happen? I think, well, I, I I don't know that it's going to matter. You know, I mean, it's mm. the, the way the wave is the the tsunami is here. So is it going to be regulated and safe and, you know, things like that? Or is it going to be I mean, it, there's no going back because yeah. the experience is I mean, is is that the change is too deep and wide. I mean, there's there's just no going back. So um agreed agreed i mean i I, you know you can get you can order ketamine through mind bloom you know there's Mm. there's little mail order people they'll they'll deliver um you know and they 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 recommend it for depression so i don't really know the ins and outs i know i know that um these are ancient practices that i i think best done under guidance and supervision with intention. And I, I bring tons of spiritual intention to it. It's not yeah. just some crazy day for me. It's like, I go in there like, I wanna, I wanna elevate my life. Oh, me too. That's the, the last set I did with these two beautiful women. They were like the next day, they're like, wow, you just, you did the work. And yeah. I was like, anything that came up, I'm like, I gotta talk about this. It was like, I felt like, and, and let me know if you've, I've done a lot of therapy in my life and I felt like it was like a decade of therapy done in one day. Yeah. Like my cells were like, here you go. I need, let's talk about this. Let's get this. I felt like a purging of the traumas and the past and the yeah. negative belief patterns that held me back. And then the next day I could start anew. So you're saying, okay, so now, so here we are six weeks later and here's what I've heard you say that you, you are just, you speak what you want you say no and and it's easy it's easy yep. it's easy what else tell and and your relationship with your daughter has oh. improved yeah um so relationships that weren't working for me or relationships that needed to be healed i have absolutely gone to those people and healed them uh one of them is a very good friend of mine that i lost contact with um and about 2 weeks after the the journey she just kept popping up in my head and popping up in my head and i was like why am I not calling her? Why am I not rekindling? That was a, a friend like you talked about with your, your soul sister who you talk on them. That yeah. was what this friend was to me. And so I called her out of the blue. Uh, she lives in Australia and we just picked right back up. We're actually gonna meet, we haven't seen each other in like four so or five great. years. We're gonna meet in Hawaii in August. And we've so this whole beautiful friendship has been rekindled. 
I didn't even realize that I was asleep to the fact of how much I was missing that friendship in my life. Wow. And that those are the kind of ahas that keep coming. And they keep coming after the journey. What about work-wise? Oh, oh. <laughs> come on. Okay, you want to know? Yeah, I do. I, I, I don't want to work as hard. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to succeed in a patriarchal way anymore. I, yeah. I want to bring the feminine to this next phase of my life. So, you know, I feel a little bit like your post Oprah moment, you know, it's like, I, as an author, feel like I've hit the pinnacle of something really amazing. I, I was just on a call with Hay House this morning. We have over a hundred thousand copies that have been sold of Fast Like a Girl and are out there in the world in wow. six months. Wow. Yeah. So, it, and, and there's like a movement that is just so beautiful. So now I sit here and go, why, why am I working so hard? I want to inspire, I'm like you, I want to be on the forefront of spiritual teaching and, and leading the, the, the changes in thought. But do I have to do a 10 hour work week, day to accomplish that? And what I'm learning is that my own creativity actually comes in the quiet. So this about a week ago, I canceled like half of my travel. I canceled interviews. And I just made a stand that I'm going to have a summer for the first time. I'm actually going to play like I did as a kid. And I'm just going to enjoy this life of that I've created. I have never, everybody that knows me is like, are you okay? What's wrong? Like I have been on a go, go machine and that journey helped me see, I don't want to do that anymore. That's amazing. That's amazing. amazing right? Amazing. So, and when we look at like how the patriarch has taught us, it has been in order to achieve something, you better work your ass off. Very much like you just said, right. when we look at the younger generation, we're like, what do you mean you don't want to work so hard? But what if the new paradigm that's emerging is coming through fluidity and it's bringing that femininity forward and in the femini femininity, there needs to be softness. Yeah. That softness is actually how we go further. Yeah. So much so that I, I was on a diary of the CEO a couple of weeks ago that, and he's the number one podcast in Europe. And I made a statement about feminism that has now been clickbaity all over the internet. Really? What'd you say? Yes. I said, uh, and I, and I stand by this, which is as women, if we want to get ahead now, or if we want to be healthy now if we want to be successful happy and healthy we're going to have to learn when to soften we're going to have to learn when to say no we're going to have to learn when to pause oh that sounds like the the new true multi-dimensional definition of feminism though like, yeah i i'm call, i'm calling yeah. it authentic feminism it's yes. like an authentic yeah 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 it's not like feminism draped and informed by the patriarchy it's yes. authentic feminism. Yeah. It's it's very much like the red tent idea. You know, yeah. if we go back and we look at, at even matriarchal societies, there is this moment where women every month would go into a place of nurturing and rest and restore so we could come out and right. we could be the, the, the empowerer that we want to be. But we're not doing that as women. We're not doing that. We're push, 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 push through. And it's destroying us. Yeah. I would totally. Agree. I mean, that's you, that's your story, right? It's totally my story, and and it will sneak up on me if my slippery character. Next thing you know, I'll start. Oh, there's the push. There's the effort. There's the push. There's a well. Maybe I should do this, this, and this, and this too. Yeah. And 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 those are my clues. Uh oh, there it is. Yep. There's the old yep. version of me inserting herself, and she's not in a place of trust. She thinks she has to um, do more doing. And I got to keep my eye on that because yeah. those patterns are deep. Yeah, they're very deep. Uh, and I would say the other th piece that I've come out of this recent journey with is I can actually sit on the couch now. So I literally could sit on the couch and watch a movie now. I couldn't do that before because every cell in my body was like, get up, go. Like, why are you sitting here? You got and 10 you YouTube you videos to do. Right, exactly. You got a book to write and a YouTube videos and a podcast interview. Get your ass off the couch. And and last Monday, I actually sat on the couch and at four o'clock on a Monday afternoon and I watched 
like four hours of movies. It was heaven. And I would have, yeah. I've, I have never done that in my, like in my adult life. I haven't done it in about 25, 30 years. Yeah. So those are the gifts I those think it gives gifts. you. Because, I mean, what do you, what do you experience just so we can kind of help people see post journey? Do you feel like you continue to have those ahas? I absolutely continue to have those ahas and, and experiences. I, I just literally two days ago got back from Africa from two weeks in Africa. Ah, yes. And I went there. But I, I, I set it up so much differently for myself. I said, I'm not going as a tourist. I'm going as a pilgrim. And I'm going mm. to connect my consciousness to the mineral kingdom, the earth kingdom, the plant kingdom, the animal kingdom, and really let myself learn from those consciousnesses. Let the animals be my shamans. Like come in a very receptive mode. And I came back with this. This was the big word. I need more space. I need more mm. space. You got to create like more space. physical space? All of it. All of it. More space in my calendar. Thought I had enough. More. Oh. Need more space. Need more. In my physical space, I need clearing. More space. Now, I'm getting ready to move. So this week, I'm, I'm, I, I came back getting ready to, what am I going to take? What am I not going to take? What am I going to donate? And now it's just like gone. Gone. I had this big group of purses. Now, by the time you think about how am I going to resell them and how am I going to price them and who am I going to sell them, I'm just like gone. My dog nanny's like, these are nice purses. Get them out of here. Take them. Right. You know, I don't want I don't want to revert on that because it isn't because I spent money on them that I want to keep them. I'm not using them. Goodbye. Go yeah. have go have another life. I need more space. So that came to me, that deep sense of reverence for the quality of space in my life. And I'm wow. responsible for that. And when wow. I create that space, all of a sudden, after those journeys and all those downloads, more can pour into me. Yes. But it yes. can't if I'm carrying around every relationship I've had since the second grade and every piece yeah. of paper and every this and every pot and pan. And it's like too much. Mm -mm. It's almost like it unconstipates you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. You got to open up the channels. You have to open That's right. up the channel. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Well, I, I appreciate your authenticity. You know, I think one thing that I just adore about you is just how real you are. And I, I really feel like we need more realness in this world, especially as women. It's like put the mask down and just be our authentic selves. And I just, I love that about you. It's so attractive. So thank, thank you, you Dr. For that. Mindy. Listen, and I love talk. Uh, listen, I, I think these are the conversations. These are the exciting yes. conversations of our time. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. And, and so share a little bit about what's next for you, because I know uh, that you have some big ideas on books and you're yeah. moving and what, what's on the forefront of your mind right now. Yeah. Well, what, what's on, on the forefront really is keeping my eyes on the prize here and keeping mm. my heart open and really creating mm. that space. But I do have this next, um, you know, my, my first book was The Beautiful No was really about my, my journey to the transformation and to the need for it. And I think um, in, a, in a meditation, I downloaded my next book, which is really the, the, my own mission, which is, let's say I have 30 years left. How do I make them the greatest 30 years of my life mm. and not just wind down the clock or, you know, be like, well, since it's, you know, like what, what are the things that I need to do? And, and, and there's no examples, you know, I, I, in my family of that necessarily, like starting a business when you're 60, you know, um, dreaming a new dream, writing a new book, learning to scuba dive, you know, whatever that might be. So, I am really looking at what are the things that are possible for all of us? What are new ways for us to create that last bit, those last mm. 30 years? So you've wrapped mm. up th this life experience brilliantly. Mm, oh my gosh. I can't, are you, you know, I, one thing I've discovered about re writing is when you get clear, it actually flows through you really yeah. fast. Yeah. So are you actually actively writing this next book? Because yeah. we all need it. I'm actively writing it. I'm actively living it and writing it. 
because awesome. it's 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 my my mission for me like what is the I best medicine program what's it going to be how are you going to wrap this life experience brilliantly so when your last breath comes here's the thing i say and i i I've, I've sat next to enough people who are like regretful and scared mm. about what was next i want to be i want to take my seat and say yay what's next mm. and and what what are what are the 30 years that are going to get me there yeah you know, you and I need to collab continue to collaborate more and more because I have a dream that I want us to use our menopausal years as catalyst for a new version of ourselves yes. to appear. Yes. And so I want women to go into their menopausal years and be like, yes, I'm here. Now my neurochemical armor is coming down. My hormones are changing. And now I can finally live life on my terms. And I feel like if we could rebrand aging, we could rebrand menopause, we could rebrand this time yeah. of life that you and I are in, we would free so many women. Well, and Dr. Mindy, here's what I'm gonna say to you. You are very much at the forefront of shifting this paradigm of what's possible for women in the middle of life. And the, and the beauty is for everybody who's listening along with you and me, we get to shift it and live it at the same time. Yes. We're not just changing it for the generations that are coming behind us, which is very nice. We get, <laughs> it's very nice, very generous of us, but we, are, we also get to live it. Yes. And that's what yes. excites me. That's what excites me. And you taught me several things today, but one of them is now when people ask me what I'm up to, I'm going to say that I'm writing and living my next book. That's I right. love that idea. Yes. So let's finish up on this. I have a tradition every year with this podcast is we have a theme. And this year the theme was self-love. Yeah. And to me, self-love embodies two things. It's the practice of self-love and it's the ownership of the qualities that we're really great at. So do you have a practice of self-love, a daily one? And what do you think your superpower is that you bring to the world? Well, hearty har har, my daily practice is meditation. Um, and, and I, and I start it like this. I do a 20 minute, uh, mantra based meditation every morning. And I start, I, I, before I sit down to do it, I say, I love myself first. I love myself most. And mm. I just, I just let that land in my bones and then I'll do the 20 minute meditation and I really will do it not just talk about it. And I think here's what I think my superpower is. I will not give up on myself. Ooh, I will not get. So good. I'll make so many so mistakes. Good. I'll I'll get. I'll do so many foolish things. You know. I'll just go down that road. You know. But I just will not give up on myself. I won't. Ugh. That I think that is so inspirational for us all, and I think it's something we we have to make a a. a a declaration individually, each one of us, just don't give up on yourself. I, I yeah. freaking love that. Okay, how do, how do people find you? I could chat with you forever, but how do people dip into your wisdom and find you? SherrySalata.com, everything we do is on there. Um, um, I mean, it's the only conversation I wanna have, so I'm having it all the time in, in, in my world and everybody's invited to come along. Oh. I love you. Thank you. For I love you. Everything you do. I love you. And thank you. I'm fast. I'm fasting with 90 women in my world every day because yes. of you. I yes. know. I, I, awesome. I, I love you so much. And here's what I always say. It's free, people. We're yes. spending all that money on things. Fasting yes. is free. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Thank you again so much. Just I Thanks. can talk to you for hours. So thank you. Yep.